I would love to circle back on um, the case that you settled recently, um, the civil rights case, if you don't mind, kind of going into that. I would love to talk about race, discrimination, and harassment um, in the workplace. Um, can you kind of take us through the, um, the Nicole um, Bearden case? Well, I wish I could say it was a settlement, but you know, we won it. Uh, we won a, a very contentious jury trial in Los Angeles Superior Court uh, last year, and the, uh, but of course, you know, we we got a good win. The, the jury awarded uh, close to one point six million dollars on behalf of our client. The judge awards another eight hundred thousand in attorneys' fees. So. There's a lot on the line there, $2.4 million in terms of this is a situation where an employer, and here it's the UC Regents is the employer. Now I'm a UCLA law graduate, and this was out of UCLA Hospital in Santa Monica, um, institutions that I hold dear to my heart. One of the jurors uh, uh, that in voir dire said, I just graduated UCLA. I don't know if I could hold UCLA accountable. I said, well, you know, don't you think it's important? I don't, you know, don't you think it's important that for the institutions that we believe in, that when they, when there is wrongdoing, that we hold them accountable? And he said, yeah. And, you know, he was a young man who gave good answers to other questions. So I left him on the jury and he was the foreperson. So it's like, you know, it was, it was kind of beautiful in that respect. But Nicole Burden was an African-American phlebotomist who was just dedicated to her work and was a very good phlebotomist, did, did more blood draws than most of her coworkers and were able to prove that. But unfortunately, um, she, there was a clique of dispatchers and coworkers who had it in for her. And it got to the point where it seemed like they definitely had it in for her based on her race, that they were treating her differently than the other employers in the workplace. And she complained in writing a couple of times. And now if I had been writing her emails or looking at her emails, I would have done them very differently because she just kind of threw it out there. Like I'm being harassed, I'm being discriminated against. This is unfair, it's, you know. And she really didn't go into any detail. Well, what did her boss do? And what did human resources do? Absolutely nothing. They just ignored her emails. But when another worker complained about her, Boom, it was a full scale investigation. We're really able to show the different treatment. Like, why does this bring in a full investigation, but you're just ignoring her emails? And what we were really able to show is that there was an implicit bias and stereotypes that were going on in the workplace. And, you know, I think that it's, it, it, it really shows why so many African Americans right now are saying, hey, there's two Americas, you know, there really is. And, and, and the, uh, the America for African Americans and, and, and other minorities and women in the workplace in some industries too, you know, it goes, it, it runs the gamut, right? That there were stereotypes used, such as she's lazy, she's untrustworthy, she's a liar. None of that was true about Nicole Burden. When you really got, you know, when, I, when she testified, I could just see the jury waiting for it because they had heard some things about her and she gets up there and you could just see they're waiting. And when I was questioning her, like, oh, wow, she's a really sweet person. She's a really nice person. You know, she is a really nice person. Like I say, you, the likability is a big factor. You know, juries aren't going to give that kind of money, honestly, to someone that they don't like. So, you know, you, that, that's why I always tell people, like, you know, you really have to um, conduct yourself in, in a way that, um, you know, doesn't, you, you know, they, they always say, you know, they, it's like football. They always get the guy who retaliates, you know. <laughs> you never see the first, <laughs> the first hit, right? So it's the same thing in, in, in the workplace. So we were able to show, and, and you know, you close your arguments, you know, that you heard the term driving while black. Well, for Nicole Burden, you know, it was like talking to another coworker while black, riding an elevator while black. I mean, someone actually complained that they saw her outside with the lab coat on. They made a big deal about it that, you know, but it was like everybody did that. But for Nicole Burden, she must have not been doing her job when, when she was taking a break. Now, every employee, right, is entitled to break time. So the fact that you see them outside getting a breath of fresh air doesn't mean that you complain about it and doesn't mean that, you know, when there was this complaint, she gets called to the carpet by her boss. What were you doing outside? Where were you? And this was like, you know, 
some a situation where she doesn't necessarily know what she was doing at, at the time, but it sh just exemplified the different ways that she was being treated as compared to her coworkers. The fact that she had at least sent those emails, Gina, was just so crucial because one of the standards are, in, and this is, relates to that avoidable consequences doctrine that I was talking about, is you have to show that the employer had noticed, but it's a known or should have known standard. So even though they never called her in and questioned about her, what questioned her, what do you mean by this? We were able to so, show well, they should have known about it because if they would have responded to our emails like they responded to the other people's complaints, she would have told them what she was going through. And the fact that they claimed that they didn't was more a function of them not doing their jobs when she was sending those emails rather than um, Nicole not coming in and, and saying it. And I think that, you know, one thing I know so many people are saying, well, what can I do to make a difference right now? And one of it is being willing to be a witness. I mean, we had another coworker who was African American at great risk to herself. She was on pregnancy leave and she came into court and told the truth. Now, and, and having that independent witness, someone who comes in and validates that she too, although she didn't bear the brunt as much as Nicole, but she too experienced discrimination and harassment in the workplace, that type of testimony makes all the difference. So well, none of us really want to get that jury summons and none of us really want to be, you know, get a call, oh, did you witness this and get involved? You know, as a community, we really have to see how we're there for each other. And, you know, I, I always, one important thing is let the truth be your guiding light, you know, whether you're a witness or, or, or a client. And I'm always insistent on, with my clients. Tell me the truth. Tell me the whole truth. You know, the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And, you know, we can figure out how to deal with the truth. But what I can't come back from is if you lied about something critical and you get caught, we're most likely going to lose, you know, and, and it, you know, it, we may be able to explain it. And sometimes you can, but, you know, it, it's really important to, uh, to allow the truth to, to be your, your guide. And, and, you know, one of the things about Nicole Burden was, you know, she was an absolutely honest, hardworking person who was just there to do her job and, and was just treated badly by her coworkers. So we were able to go into LA Superior Court with a very diverse jury. And the individuals who were harassing her were of Latina descent. I was a little scared to death about that, honestly, because, you know, at Los Angeles is, is, um, has a very high population. But by the end of the trial, everyone saw this for what it was. And when I went through those implicit biases in closing argument, I said, you know, these are the types of things that were said about Nicole Burden, but in different contexts, they could be said about many different ethnicities or genders. And, and you know, it just the facts and the evidence in this case, it was based on her race. And it was based on her being African-American. And at the end of the trial, I will never forget, because you know, people hustle out a little bit, but one of the male um, Latino jurors who, you know, you, you get a tough read on person, I mean, he reached over and he touched my client's arm and he goes, nobody should ever have to go through what you went through. And, and I, I, it was just such a beautiful, powerful moment because it, it really showed how ultimately humanity triumphed over any sort of, you know, ethnic differences that we that we have and that get exploited in certain situations and you know and, and it's what we want right it, it, we really want a, a, a society where you know we, we where people are judged by the work that they do and we're, where we come together as as human beings and and be a true country united country and um, I won't get into politics but hopefully we'll have an opportunity for change uh, in order to help accomplish that as well yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I keep on saying, you know, better days are coming, you know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. E e exactly.